Hi everyone, this is Real World Audio and today this is a very important episode. This is uh, talking about the layout uh, for the Baby Darling amplifier build. So if you want to build your little single-handed amplifier, what is the minimum uh, chassis size that I recommend and how do you arrange your parts? So layout is basically the way you put your parts in your uh, amplifier, how you arrange them. And, base, and th doing this arrangement is a critical part. It's one of the most important parts of amplifier building. And if you don't know how to do it or you know how to do it, that is the difference between building a crappy amplifier and a wonderful amplifier. And also, that's the difference between you having a, a nightmare or a wonderful experience building them. I'm sorry for the background noises. Nelly is working on her project as well. Uh, so this is how we do things. We uh, rather do things together than uh, living in a man cave and a lady cave, something like that. So there we go. Uh, back here, what is this minimum size that I recommend? It is 11 inches by 14 inches. Those of us who know metric, we can also use a calculator. We are very adept at it, so easy peasy. Uh, so why am I choosing this size, this size as a minimal recommendation? Uh, you will uh, hear about that shortly, but I'm also going to show you for a sneak preview, that size that I originally recommended in my video. And then here we are going. So this is the 14 inches by 18 inches size. So this is for the full size darling. And you can build your baby darling on this size. And I would say I would recommend this for you to build it on uh, this size because uh, this will allow uh, future modifications if you want to do and believe it or not even this size might not be enough in the future so look at me I have added a second uh, chassis uh, in addition and look at the size of that power transformer uh, if you drop that on your foot then you will uh, well spend the rest of your days walking uh, with aids and not <laughs> on your two feet so so that's how far you can go with it and even like such a monster amplifier and the inside is full of chokes and transformers as well uh, you see the output transformer this is a 30 watt uh, single ended uh, iron it is a 5 kilos each or 10 pounds each. And uh, if you say 30 watts, that doesn't say a lot. But if they were push-pull output transformers, each of them would be about uh, 200 watt uh, output transformers with this size. And, uh, and yes, the, the, even though this amp is so big and so heavy, it's, it's, it's really, really heavy. The, the chassis is made of uh, three millimeters thick aluminum, but if I move it and pick it, pick it up, the chassis actually bends under the weight of the transformers that are inside, even though that's, that's a pretty sturdy and, and very strong chassis. So you can go to that extreme, and if you think that it puts out thousands of watts, no, it puts out an amazing 1.2 watts into these big loudspeakers into six, 16 ohm 1.2 watts per channel so just because you really go to extreme ways it doesn't mean that you have to amp up the power level uh, you just need to increase the size of your transformers which means that you are uh, improving the support for your vacuum tube complement because bigger transformer means bigger headroom there's more magnetic capacity for your uh, uh, vacuum tubes to use 
and that will make the difference so if you want an amplifier that sounds like a very big amplifier you just need big transformers to achieve it and then you have headroom you have uh, weight and authority to it and uh, however this is where you you can arrive after a long journey uh, but that's not at the beginner's level uh, this amp as it is now it takes well over 1000 hours of build time from an expert builder so i'm not recommending it to anyone so right now let's uh, go back to our layout and the layout for the baby darling is uh, that 11 inches by 14 inches why am i showing this size because this is the size that you would use for a normal uh, amplifier so incidentally this is the bottom plate of a Heathkit W6 so here it is that's a Heathkit W6 being uh, that was totally gutted uh, sandblasted repainted and uh, and and lots of things going on as you see it on the, on the outside it looks like a Heathkit W6, on the inside it looks nothing like that. That's my total redesign of the amplifier. By the way, the W6 Heathkit, it's one of the three kings in audio vintage gear. So when you look at a vintage uh, American uh, uh, push-pull amplifiers, then there are three kings which are the three big legends, one of them being the uh, Citation, the Harman Kardon Citation uh, 2, uh, and the other one being, which one, the, the Marantz 9B, and the third one is the Heathkit uh, W6. So all of these amps represent the same category, the same quality of craftsmanship, and the heath kit was by far the cheapest of the three because it was sold in a kit form so you could put your put it uh, together yourself and that's why it was much cheaper but it uses the same quality transformer the same quality iron as the marantz or the uh, or the citation uses or the harman cardon uses and they are absolutely enormous, brutal uh, pieces of engineering. And uh, two nights ago, when I carried these brothers down the stairs, I almost broke my back. So that, that's how big they are. And that's what makes them, gives them so much potential. And even today, they, they carry this potential over. So if you want to build an ultimate push-pull amplifier, vacuum tube amplifier, then the Heathkit W6 is uh, one of the best materials to work with. For a Harman Kardon Citation or a Marantz, uh, you, those are also fantastic sources, but their prices are orbital. Especially the Marantz, it, it's really expensive, so you won't be able to get it but uh, you can get uh, a heath kit for pennies basically and uh, just gut it and, and rework it so this is the bottom plate of the heath kit and uh, we will use it in this layout so the narrower part will be the face that's the front of the amp and and uh, and the wider part will be the sides and then when it's ready you can put it on your shelf like this so now we got to the part which is the layout itself so here it is this is my recommended layout for the baby darling and this is the front of the amp and now we are looking at the inside of the chassis so if you were to have your amplifier put flip it upside down we are looking at the inside so this is the top plate of the amplifier and looking from above so how the layout works you really have to arrange the parts uh, going with the flow of the signal so here what we have the very front of the amplifier is the input so our rca jacks are right here in the front 
I know some of you will be booing that, oh, I don't want to see any of my cables. I want convenience. My wife doesn't want to see those cables in the front, whatnot. And then what, uh, what a lot of designers do, they give in to temptation and they put the RCA jacks in the back and they end up right next to your power connector, right? And they also put the speaker connectors in the back. So everything is there. Maybe let's make a little bit of difference between them. I mean, a little bit of distance, but everything is in the back. So what you have is the lowest level signal being affected by, by the line AC, 120 volts or 230, 40 volts. And, and your signal, your low level signal has to travel from the back up to here in the front, all the way going through your the vicinity of your power transformer, of your high voltage supply, your filament supply, and it's picking up the noise from all of that. So these guys here, that's the power supply section. It's making all the noise. And you want to keep the fragile signal away from it at any cost, I would say. Repeat again, at any cost. If you want to put your RCA jacks in the back, to look chic, to look hype, do it and deal with the consequences. And uh, you see, that's why a lot of designs for uh, who, who just want to make their amp look very pretty, but they neglect the essential considerations. That's why we have so many mediocre amps out there because the designers, uh, uh, really are making compromises and and even though this is a very cheap project a small amplifier with very small parts list it is of the highest quality and and the quality goes for the the signal path and it goes for the layout and and overall engineering so we are not making compromises. So when you buy a, a regular amplifier, even if you buy a Heathkit W6, which is a working unit, not, not the one that I rebuild, it's full of so many compromises that your hair would stand up on your head up to the sky if I would start listing you all the compromises that I make. And, and, uh, but that's also good news for us because working around the compromises, you can rebuild them and, and catapult them to such extreme potential that the original amp never showed. So let's come back here again to our layout. So what I'm recommending for all of you to make the build the easiest is just take a piece of metal. So like have an 11 inches by 14 inches flat plate this one has a lip ignore the lip we don't need the lip this is just the bottom plate of the heat kit and uh, you will end up putting a few screw holes on the sides and have a wooden frame around it and the wooden frame just like there that will be the sides and that will be the support of the chassis and what you will do is you will mount all your parts onto this plate and some of the parts will be on top and some of them will be underneath and uh, most of them will be under the chassis so the only things you want to put on top of the chassis are one thing the vacuum tubes themselves because they generate heat and they, you don't want the heat to get stuck inside the unit and those transformers which have which are potted or have end bells so what is a potted transformer for example let's have a look at this this guy is a potted transformer so it look you see it is encased in a metal uh, cover and and this metal cover has a thing that looks like this so it, there's a transformer inside and they put uh, uh, oil or tar or what they did with the heat kit, they have a uh, ground up, uh, what did they use? Uh, granite, crushed granite 
uh, it is that that's what they use to fill up uh, the the free space and then they put tar onto it and why they do that uh, to to basically the crushed granite it dampens the resonances of the transformer so the art of making uh, potted transformers is really about resonance control how to make sure that it doesn't vibrate because when alternating current flows through a transformer it starts to vibrate and resonate and we want those resonances to be dampened and not be uh, transferred from one component to other because let's see you have your tra power transformer here and it resonates with your 50 hertz or 60 hertz and then that resonance will be transferred to this uh, to your main chassis so everything here will be resonating the resonances will be so tiny that if you put your hand on it you will not feel it because it's a heavy transformer it, this is bolted down to the wooden chassis underneath so you don't feel the resonances so much but there are very low level resonances and when you have your vacuum tubes mounted here and those tubes are resonating as well and that is like a constant earth shake for your vacuum tubes just imagine this is like uh, having uh, buildings imagine your vacuum tube is a building and the ground is constantly shaking under it so even if the, the tremors are really tiny at the ground level at the top of your vacuum tube the resonances will be of much greater amplitude that's the same thing as it happens with buildings if you have a very very small earthquake when you are standing in the ground you are not feeling it if you are on the 20th floor up here then you will feel the move the building moving out maybe four or five feet or a couple of meters while down here there's nothing so that's one big important source of microphonics we will get into that later so right now this video is getting very long even though we have just started so one of my tricks is uh, when you do your layout put only potted transformers on the outside or transformers which have end bells what is an end bell these are the end bars so at the end bars these are metal plates which cover the transformer so when you look at that iron it is like this so it the transformer is standing like this transformer by the way in comparison this is a 150 va core and look at that it it's absolutely tiny compared to the output transformer i would say maybe half of the weight half of the size so basically this is like a, if it was a power transformer it would be a 300 va power transformer but back to it so here it has a metal plate attached to this side and another metal plate to the back side and the metal plate has a foot and you see there are screws holding the plates together onto the uh, laminations these are called the laminations and there's another set of screws that holds it down to the chassis. So those are the potted transfer, I mean, that's the end bars. And here, all of these guys that you see that, that, these are potted transformers. So you can keep end bar transformers and potted transformers on the outside because their insides are protected from weather and they're protected from prying hands. If you have a transformer that has an open frame, these are called open frame transformers, which means it doesn't have an end bar. Uh, that one is also an open frame transformer. So in these cases, I recommend never to put these on the outside of your chassis because it will be exposed to the elements. It, uh, it will suffer corrosion. Uh, kids might be just touching it uh, and if the amp is on and they touch it and maybe they use a screwdriver to just you know go in there that's what kids do they can get zapped and killed so it also there are safety complications if your kid goes nuts with a potted transformer even if it's a toddler 
uh, they they cannot hurt themselves maybe if they trip and they uh, hit their head on the transformer that's a danger for them but there's no electrical danger your your baby will not electrocute herself or himself if it starts to touch the potted or the end belt transformers so look out for safety and look out for to protect your family and protect your transformer as well so you can protect your transformer two ways either add end bells on it or have potted transformers then they go outside if they are nude they are open frame like these guys are then they all go on the inside and uh, thank you for tuning in and this is part one of the layout section and we'll continue with our layouts thank you please like subscribe and have fun building and planning bye bye